I'm going to end this section with one slightly more challenging example. Um, here we've got a function with a square root, right? So we, in the last video, we went over the, these, the basic principle when you're dealing with a rational function that you compare the degrees of the numerator and the denominator. You ask yourself which is bigger, and depending on whether you know, the numerator has degree bigger than, equal to, or smaller than the degree in the denominator, um, in each of those three cases, you basically know what your answer is going to be. Now, here we have a square root. And the first risk with something like this is you might see the x squared in the numerator and say, oh, you know, degree 2, degree 1 uh, must be going to infinity. But, right, we're, we're taking the square root of that square. So really, um, the degree is only half of what it appears to be. So these actually are kind of the same degree, to the extent that the term degree even applies when there's a square root involved. Um, the other thing is you've got to be a little bit careful about signs here, right? Um, in these examples with rational functions, we rely on the fact that, that these terms go to zero. And it doesn't matter whether x is going to plus infinity or minus infinity, 1 over any power of x is going to be zero. So I get the same answer for x going to minus infinity that I do when x is going to plus infinity. But look what's going on over here. That's a, a square root in the numerator, right? Square roots are always positive, right? The square root function is, is a positive function. Right? It's never a negative, unless you put a minus sign out front. Uh, the, the denominator, on the other hand, is a linear function. Right? x can be either positive or negative here. There is going to be a point at which that denominator becomes negative. Right? Um, so for x large and positive, this thing should have a positive value. Right? For our x large and negative, it's going to have a negative value. That means that we don't expect the same limit at plus infinity as we do as we approach minus infinity. And if you're not careful, it's really easy to miss the fact that those two limits should be different. Um, so to see how you should proceed in something like this, we say, OK, so the limit as x approaches infinity of f of x, well, the first thing we might do is Take that x squared plus 1, and I'm going to bring out the x squared. And I'm going to write the x squared times 1 plus 1 over x squared. OK? Now, that's all under the square root. Leave the bottom alone for now. OK? If we want, we could factor it in x. In fact, we'll do that in the next step. OK, now. I take the limit as x goes to infinity. If you have a square root of a product, you can write that as the product of the square roots, right? So square root of x squared, square root of 1 plus 1 over x squared. On the bottom, eh, why not? Let's bring out, uh, in fact, we could even factor out the 2x if we wanted to. Um, 2x times. 1 plus 2 over x. We could write it like that. And here's the catch. What a lot of people forget is that the square root of x squared, it isn't simply x, right? Because the left-hand side is always positive. Right-hand side could be negative, right? Um, what it actually is, is the absolute value of x. Okay? So in this case, because x is going to plus infinity, I, I can assume that x is bigger than 0. So this is just equal to x. And because it's equal to x, I can cancel it. All right? Then I can apply limit laws, right? I, I know that I can bring the limit inside the square root. So this is just going to be 1 plus 0 under the square root. So I just get 1 over 2. Well, 2 times 1. So I get a half, right? But if I were doing the limit as x approaches minus infinity, OK, when I get to this step here, Square root of x squared is absolute value of x, right? Now, 
Maybe I'll leave the two in this time. Doesn't really matter where you put it. All right. Since x is going to minus infinity, absolute value of x is no longer x. Absolute value of x is minus x. Since x is negative, All right? Minus x over x gives me minus 1. So I get the limit as x goes to minus infinity of minus 1 times the square root of 1 plus 1 over x squared divided by 2 plus 4 over x. So I actually get minus 1 half for my limit in this case. Okay. So that one's a little bit trickier, right? It's, 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 it's more complicated than your basic rational function. You have to stop and think a little bit and be careful. Um, but still, as long as, you, as long as you remember that the square root of a square is actually the absolute value, um, and then that matters if x is negative, then you'll be okay. You'll still be able to sort it out.